Let's talk about max margin classifiers. So recall our um, lecture on Bayesian decision theory uh, and Bayesian observable Bayesian boundary. Remember how we have um, two posterior distributions, uh, uh, the black for class one and the red for class two. That's what you see here on the right. So, and um, our decision is that if posterior for class uh, one is greater than posterior for class two, we decide for class one. And um, if it's reverse case, posterior for class one is less than posterior for class two, then we decide for two. Effectively, what we're doing uh, in this case, we are uh, minimizing the base error, which is the minimum. The base error is the minimum of the two of the two posteriors. So minimizing the base error is the optimal strategy if the no if we know the posterior exactly. Okay, that's that's nothing new. That's what we already covered. But well, well, how do we know the posterior exactly or anyhow? Well, let's consider decision boundary for two classes. In the general case, we need to non-parametrically estimate the densities. And remember from our kernel density estimation class, um, depending on how you choose your um, kernel parameter, uh, the width or bandwidth, if it's small or if it's large, the boundary changes dramatically. Here on the pictures, say h is small, or h is your parameter, width parameter and h is large. That's what you see here on the right and on the left. So, but in the general case, we want to be able to estimate somehow uh, probability, oh, well, the joint probability really, but say posteriors of each class and our h is that width here if you recall so let's take a radial basis function a gaussian distribution or a gaussian like uh, symmetric distribution for our kernel um, it's a fine estimator the only problem is that depending on which width you take um, introduction of um, extra points will uh, will have a tendency of um, adversely affecting the decision boundary and some outliers also greatly affect the decision boundary but just because of um, the estimate not because of uh, real decision boundary but just because our estimate is sensitive uh, to outliers and uh, because we're not we do not have uh, the actual base um, uh, the actual posterior of the classes we do not have um, the base optimal classifier either and our boundary decision boundary is only an, uh, is only an approximation So the variance uh, in this case, when we're modeling um, our posteriors or our joint as some estimate of the true posterior, our decision boundary is um, sensitive to outliers. It has, in other words, it has high variance with respect to the data. So we uh, don't want to avoid, uh, we don't want that, we want to avoid this arbitrary fluctuations in decision boundary. Uh, 
and uh, thanks to tongue and color um, in uh, the restricted base optimal classifiers there is a way so what they suggested there is uh, let's define a restricted base optimal classifier in the following way given a joint distribution this uh, kernel density estimated um, distribution of the data given class and a set of classifiers H so some class of classifiers in this uh, finite set or in this class maybe infinite we say that H star is a restricted base optimal classifier with respect to the class H and the estimate of the likelihood actually is uh, yeah is a restricted ways optimal classifier with respect to h and p uh, and p uh, and such that h star uh, belongs to the class and for all other h's in the class for all other classifiers the error of that H star classifier restricted base optimal with respect to the estimated probability distribution. And the error is that base error that we looked at in a um, couple of slides back. If this error with respect to the estimated probabilities is less than um, the error for any other classifier. So we have a restricted class instead of actually tracing and drawing uh, the decision boundary, the Bayesian optimal decision boundary, we're saying, well, let's consider class of linear classifiers. And then we'll choose among all of the possible linear classifiers, we'll choose a classifier that minimizes our Bayesian error, our base error, with respect to the estimate of our distribution that so so there is an estimated distribution if we try to uh, trace our decision boundary exactly with respect to that distribution we will have a high variance result add an extra point and everything changes uh, the boundary adjusts and starts wiggling if you keep adding points that's annoying and um, that's not um, too robust so instead we're saying well let's only consider like a linear fit to that boundary more or less um you can think about it that way and let's choose a fit that is the that gives us the smallest error among, among all possible lines for example think about our uh, again our previous slide that we got well a slide that we saw before in the kernel density estimation. When we have a large and smooth estimator with large width, then add another one in 3D here. So your decision boundary will be here. We'll put a linear classifier somewhere there, right? but then keep reducing uh, keep reducing the width of your kernel of your radial basis kernel such that you get rid of all your prior assumptions because your uh, bandwidth h on the screen is essentially your prior assumption about how this distribution looks like so if you push h to zero in the end you will get delta functions on each of the points so remember this a dichotomy that I mentioned at the beginning when we were discussing empirical risk minimizations, the minimization, the theory of ARM 
and uh, Bayesian decision boundary. In ERM, the point was uh, to only rely on the data, fully rely on the data. In Bayesian decision boundary, we are working with uh, prior assumptions, probably that's why we're working with probability distributions directly. Whereas in uh, empirical risk minimization, we're working at the points, the data points, and um, kind of um, not assuming, and we, we, we still know there is some distribution of the data, but we're not assuming any functional form. So like somewhere here with a strong prior where we are assuming a functional form of uh, uh, our our um, likelihood function. And somewhere here where all of our kernel functions are so narrow that our uh, probability density basically is uh, fixed at each of the points. So what um, Tang and Carl are shown in their paper, Restricted Bayes Optimal Classifiers, is that if you take a linear classifier and you have two classes and you push the width of our kernel density estimator or the Parson window, the spherical um, radially symmetric kernel, uh, push it to zero, your restricted base optimal classifier, linear restricted base optimal classifier becomes the max margin hyperplane. So if you if you consider that you are estimating the densities then the optimal decision boundary although it will be somewhere here but it will be uh, right there in the gap such that the margin this is the gap the margin is maximized uh, Oh, the, this, the margin is um, right here. So just to repeat, we want to get base optimal classifier, but only rely on the data. And we also want to reduce the variance of our Bayesian optimal decision boundary. And for that, we replace that decision boundary with some restricted form of a classifier. And if that restricted form of a classifier is a line or hyperplane, then base optimal is the max margin hyperplane. That's a hyperplane that sits right in between the two classes when they're linearly separable. So let's consider this. Before, when we had two classes and we would train a perceptron, the so perceptron would give us any solution, right? It could give us this or that, uh, or any of the solutions that would uh, separate the classes uh, exactly. And that perceptron would converge because, okay, problem solved. But base optimal boundary tries to maximize the distance between classes so that um, any of the points that we haven't observed will still have some room to be correctly class, uh, classified. So um, if we want a good classifier for linearly separable data, or at least restricted base optimal, then we want to place our hyperplane closer to the middle of the separating uh, gap, rather than say here or here, closer to any of the classes. Well, you can um, reason through that um, 
without sort of any kind of theory using some common sense that okay well there is this uh, strip of uh, no, no one's land where would you put a border between the classes uh, well uh, let's put it in the middle uh, if we know nothing else right if we don't know anything about which class is really mostly mostly prevalent and we only um, we only know that um, those points that we have is all we got and they came iid from the distribution we know not like we don't want to make any other assumptions um okay well i hope um intuition behind how we came to the max margin uh, classifier how we came to the desire of putting the hyperplane right in between is clear right there's there are, there are still questions about base optimal uh, versus uh, restricted base optimal and um, this is a uh, restricted base optimal only in the in the limit when we refuse to smooth out our distributions and uh, when we put our uh, approximating kernels of the um, kernel density estimator right on each point and make it really uh, narrow and you should understand why why I'm stressing that out because if you have say a much smoother kernel and you have many many more of uh, the, the red uh, points then your distribution will be wider here and narrower here and in this case it will make more sense and uh, the base optimal decision would move closer to the sparser class okay hope that's clear but we're working slightly under different assumptions and under those assumptions max margin hyperplane is the best so let's look at this hyperplane. Remember how we defined it. We had a bias. We had a, uh, so we had a normal to the hyperplane, and then we multiplied it by our data, and we had a bias, and uh, uh, the hyperplane were w and x are vectors b is a scalar hyperplane was def is a set of points where this equation is zero uh, those points are right on the hyperplane but then we also if you remember we made an affine transform we added um we added um, a feature or a dimension to x of one and then in this case we could just write wtx equals zero because bias was kind of uh, woven in in w so let's consider a, around a point just a point somewhere um, around the hyperplane this point x what is the distance r from this point to the hyperplane well that's exactly the perpendicular the length of the uh, perpendicular that you drop from x to the hyperplane so um that is uh that is the length right we are computing projection of x onto the normal of the hyperplane and uh, then uh, we're normalizing by the length of our uh, normal vector, and bias uh, gives us bias gives us the shift. But um, because we're computing the distance, we're taking the absolute value here. Because we don't care if it's on one side or the other, we just want the actual absolute distance. But we can obtain the same if we use the label for this point 
because all of the points on this side are positive and all belong to positive class are positive. So label will be plus one, but label on the other side will be minus one. And then uh, for correctly classified points, at least, uh, this will always be positive regardless of which side a point lies, which side of the hyperplane the point lies. So I hope um, it's clear, please uh, parse that uh, really closely and uh, trace where it's coming from. Why is it true? So we have equation for the distance. And just uh, just another mm -hmm. just another kind of intuition if you think about this. So we have this point XP and we have this point X. And we have R a distance, right? And um, our x is nothing but xp plus the normal vector normalized the unit length. Uh, that will be a unit length w here somewhere times r. And so from here we can derive this. So now um, we know what r equals to, we know what distance equals to. When we're saying max margin or maximize the margin, what we mean is um, look at this point. Uh, what do we want to maximize? We want to maximize the distance to the nearest point. Do we want to maximize that? Uh, maybe, maybe this. Maybe, but what we really want to maximize is the distance to the uh, nearest point. So we want to maximize the minimal distance. Just writing the same. This is the distance. Um, so we're finding the minimal distance. And since uh, our R, at that distance, the minimality of it, since all of them are normalized by W, the length of the W, we can pull it out. So we uh, pull it out of this uh, minimization. So we're first finding the nearest point, and then we're maximizing that distance. And uh, we can only maximize it by fiddling with two parameters, W and B. The normal of to the hyperplane, and the bias. Okay, that's uh, what I wanted to say. Maximize the minimal distance, basically. Oh, okay. There is another, another kind of just a side note, actually. So when we start with this particular example on the screen in on the slide, we will be somewhere here, but then eventually you may over overshoot and suddenly this point will become uh, the nearest point, the minimal distance point. But notice that eventually you will converge by fluctuating and you will converge such that you won't be able to push the separating hyperplane either way because um, uh, then you will 
in uh, minimize the margin for the nearest point. Like when um, you push this optimal line, max margin line towards red, then yes, the red points becomes closer to you, but margin can still be maximized. The margin becomes smaller. And interestingly enough that, um, okay, this is a clear example clear picture on the screen that when you have just two points, two perpendiculars, um, um, they, then it's easy, show, easy, easy to show that they are the nearest points. But any kind of point on those uh, square, on those parallel lines, any point on those parallel lines, will have the same distance. So observe first before we talk about it further graphically. Observe first simply algebraically that the distance doesn't depend on W. You remember how we define it? We define it our distance um, is the label times the line equation right um, so but then it's divided by w the norm of the w the length of our normal vector so let's scale w by k when when we're scaling by k what we're doing is um, we're scaling this whole w because b is part of w essentially remember our uh, wx equals zero line equation so if we scale uh, W here, then scale W and P um, in both cases, we can take the K out and just cancel it. And we're back to the same distance. So no matter how you scale W, you make it longer, you make it shorter, uh, you know, scale it whichever way, your distance of the, of the point, the same point, if the point doesn't move, to the hyperplane is the same. Okay, it's good. So that means we're free to set um, that uh, the value of um, the the top part here of the top expression to whatever we want. We can always compensate for that value, but by uh, changing the w, right? We can always get that value by scaling. So let's set it to 1 for the nearest point. So our nearest point uh, to the hyperplane will be 1. In this case, and as you see now, we have two points that on this um, parallel line. So we're starting with uh, the separating hyperplane, Wx. plus bias and we're just saying okay um, our nearest point and this is at the solution when the margin is maximized when the margin is maximized um, as we just observed this both um, parts of the gap will be the same length uh, but because of the sign and since we're not compensating with the y here it's either plus one or minus one and we we set it arbitrarily arbitrarily so the gap is the distance between parallel hyperplanes this is our gap and we, we when we set uh, the, this distance and this sort of signed distance to one and minus one, this is what we get. But now let's find the like what what is the bias of this new hyperplane since we said what they will be equal to. Uh, so we put my, minus one here and we'll get this. We'll put one here and we'll get this. But then our gap, 
D is nothing but one bias minus another bias, the absolute value of that bias difference to normalized by the length of the uh, W of the normal to the hyperplane. So this is B1, say, and this is B2. So we get uh, the gap is 2 over the norm of the um, normal vector to the hyperplane. So to maximize the gap, we need to minim minimize um, W. Right. If we want to maximize this, this needs to be minimal. By minimizing the Euclidean norm or the length of W, uh, we can either minimize this or we can minimize one half squared. The minimum will be at the same uh, posi position, at the same place, at the same value of W, regardless of squaring or Halving. So then uh, another um, point or another observation that we want to classify the instances correctly. Right? Everything on the positive side of the hyperplane of this uh, separating hyperplane should be positive, greater or equal to, uh, to plus one. And should be negative less than or equal to minus one so it is either on the minus one hyperplane or uh, less than uh, that hyperplane or if it, it's either on plus one hyperplane or in the positive direction so um, just what i said when the label is negative it should be less than minus one when the label is positive it should be greater than or equal to uh, plus one okay less than or equal to minus one or greater than or equal to plus one or equivalently if we don't want to separately talk about positive class and negative class if you multiply this label through to both sides and to both sides here you'll see that uh, this holds the label times the hyperplane uh, equation for correctly classified samples should always be greater or equal to one. So we want to minimize, because we're maximizing the margin or the gap, we want to minimize the norm of the W, but we want to minimize it, not just arbitrarily uh, placing it somewhere, but we want to minimize it subject to a set of constraints such that all of our, our constraints are here, all of our lab, uh, all, all of our samples should be correctly classified. They should be, um, this expression should hold for all of our data points. So, okay, that's uh, clear. And then after we've done that, we uh, work similarly as with the perceptron. After minimizing, after minimizing this expression for these data points, we'll just use the sign of our hyperplane equation for classification um, to each class the point belongs to. So this is called um, linear SVM primal formulation. Uh, we want to minimize. Oh, okay. Well, we want to minimize the norm of the well, the length of the normal to the hyperplane subject to the following constraints, and we can solve this problem efficiently as a convex it's a it is a convex quadratic programming um, optimization problem with d variables and n constraints 
So that's a general form of uh, UP optimization. We want to find such W that minimizes this quadratic plus this linear term as some noise subject to the linear constraint. And this is an inequality constraint. And this is an equality constraint. Okay, that's it for this episode.